Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. If you're interested in the recovery gear I carry in the winter and when I'm traveling solo in the Cherokee, then stay tuned. We're gonna have a look at that right now. I think one important thing before we get started on the kit is having rated recovery points. So you can put soft shackles or, or D shackles in. But more importantly on the front here, we have a winch. This is a Warrior Samurai 9500. It's a, a really decent winch actually. And uh, I've had this for probably around about two years now and it's one of the best insurance policies I've ever had. In actual fact, I used it this morning. I was driving here, took my eyes off the road for a second, just looking at the view. And when you get off that hard compacted track, you go straight down into the soft stuff. The axles basically then rest on the edge and it's a lot of digging, but in all honesty, it's easier just to get the winch out much faster. Although you don't always get the biggest trees around. So, so some supporting gear for the winch is always useful. Before I get onto the obvious, I'm just gonna talk about some stuff I carry that might not be so obvious if you don't live in a cold climate. The worst of the winter's over now. I mean, today we're looking at like minus three degrees C. Back when I was out sort of a few months ago, it was minus 25 degrees C. So, you know, one of the most important things is good gloves and not finger gloves like this. These are useless in these cold conditions, really useless. These are actually just for the winch and other sort of recovery equipment like the wire rope or the wire cable even. Uh, but you want mitts really and, and even these aren't that great because you've got this finger here which does get really cold and the other mitts i've got are leather mitts and they've, they're lined with wool and they're much more efficient but good gloves really really important to have in winter recovery one thing that might not be so obvious is uh, something to lie on or um, to kneel on this is the old rooftop tent mattress bag and inside there i've got a pretty nice wool blanket doubled up and not only can you use it to lie on if you're having to make some kind of repair to the vehicle or you're kneeling down or let's say you're changing a tire, something's taking a, a long time and you want to be comfortable. Um, you can use it for a lot of other things. I use it in the awning room um, as a bit of insulation to sort of sit around on when I'm camping. My son uses it when we, when we go out and we make fires and we do some like grilling and make some food in the forest. And when it's warming up, he doesn't sort of get his gloves wet and stuff. But, you know, it's at the different times of year when the temperature changes. So just having something like this is really useful. And if you are broken down and you are really cold and you're waiting for somebody, you can take the wool blanket out and you can obviously use it to keep warm while you wait for someone to come and get you. If, if you know, you're broken down that bad and, and you can't self recover. Probably the most important piece of gear that I have is a shovel. I mean, it gets used more than the winch. This is just a Snow X shovel. It's a snow shovel made of aluminium. It's extremely lightweight, but it has um, quite a thick aluminium head to it that's actually welded to a pretty thick shaft. So that in itself makes it a little bit better than some of the other snow shovels I've seen and used. When I have used a lot of shovels since I've come to this country and started wheeling and going out camping in the snow. You really feel it when a shovel's too heavy and, um, and also too short. And that's kind of why I chopped up this shovel and, and made it into something a little bit better. Um, it's very long, as you can see. And that's kind of like a perfect length for me, really. Um, and, and the major thing really about having a shovel that's long like this is when you're off-roading or you're going in deep snow and the snow starts to get wet, you need to get under the vehicle and dislodge the snow. And if you have a very short shovel, you're gonna get very wet and then you're gonna get very cold and you're just gonna be uncomfortable. So in some climates, a short shovel is probably all you need. But I think if you're in the winter, in my experience anyway, having a shovel with a pretty long handle on and making it light so you can use it for a really long time is quite important. There have been some occasions where I've been stuck and I've been digging for over two hours attempting to get out because I've had no choice and I don't have max tracks, which is something I would love to get, but I just don't have the budget for right now. Sometimes the shovel is all you have. 
another piece of gear that you might consider buying or carrying or you might have questions about uh, the snow chains when it comes to chains i'm definitely not the best person to to ask for advice on i can only really share so much i mean i've been using chains for probably two and a half years on a range of different tires from a 32 to a 35 you know they do make a huge difference but it's but it's really all about i what i found is the conditions and how you use the chains and picking the chains for the right conditions it's there as a traction aid and this is a very basic chain so you can see that i don't have any welded v-bar to it so some chains you'll have v-bar on or, or sort of notches of steel welded to them and you put those outward facing on the tire and then when you're driving and the conditions are really icy they, they just provide you with a lot more traction than this basic chain but this chain is, is more of a forest road chain so in the mud or in the snow that's what it's designed for and that's what it's sold as and um, it's not a chain that you would drive down the road on at 70 kilometers an hour um, it would just completely trash the vehicle and probably destroy the tire and, and fall apart and, and cause all kinds of damage i have studded tires for the winter and i swapped those over to a km3 in the summer um, really in this incredibly deep snow when you're looking at like 80 centimeters to one meter you want to be on a really big tire that can float a flotation tire you don't want to be cutting through the snow unless you've got tremendous amounts of ground clearance huge narrow tires and, and portal axles if you've got the clearance that's fine cut through the snow but if you don't have the clearance and the vehicle's going to belly up you have to float so a chain can be really bad in that situation because, because a chain will basically dig and once the chain starts to dig the vehicle bellies up the chain does nothing and the tires do nothing and then it's back to your old trusty tool to get you out again and, and dig out under the belly of the vehicle and, and try and kind of repair the track despite how irritating the chains are to put on i honestly wouldn't be without a set coming out to these places and you might say well you know you should have got yourself a set of max tracks because um you know max tracks probably cost about the same and they're much lighter they're easier to use you know and i agree completely but the thing that a chain does that a max track doesn't is a chain is continuous traction strapped to the tire all the time the max track is there to get you out of a situation when you're stuck or to be used for a bottle jack or a high lift jack or you know some kind of board or lots of different things you can even bridge things with them everyone knows what you can do with max tracks there's a million videos about them but the difference being is then you have to get out get the track max track and put it in the in the vehicle and you don't always have that luxury in snow because you want to keep punching through and momentum's really the key so um i really like the chains i still carry them despite the weight i absolutely wouldn't carry them in the summer and on to the obvious something that probably should be in every vehicle a recovery bag this bag is a bag that arrived empty and, and i've filled it with all my own kit but this is a bag made by a mate of mine in australia grab my gear he makes some seriously good stuff really well put together the stitching's excellent the materials are absolutely bomb proof yeah you, know, you should definitely check his gear out he makes a lot of different things and the aussies really know their stuff when it comes to this sort of kit but um opening the bag up we'll start with the outside snatch block wire compatible for the winch this is two thousand pounds use this a few times haven't used it a lot um sometimes i don't want to pull myself at an angle and i want to straighten up going up a track this is useful i want to double the winch capacity it's also useful again and you've got a grease zerk there so you can kind of grease it and maintain it a couple of shackles i only carry two um you know i use these shackles a lot actually but uh i will eventually move over to um soft shackles just to cut down on weight you know just to refine the gear when i can afford it but uh, for the time being yeah just just a couple of shackles there got a puck as well this is a puck actually for the bottle jack but we'll talk about that in a sec it's just for you know certain situations and lifting the vehicle high vis vests you kind of have to legally carry those here and um they're really good as well if you break down or some kind of recovery that might be in an area with a bit of traffic or might see some traffic and you want people to spot you so you know the high vis is uh is pretty useful i think that's all i've got in these side pockets so i'll unzip this and show you inside First thing to grab really, probably should stuff that in an outer pocket, is gloves. These are just some old German military gloves, they used to be waterproof there. That, that feature is long gone. Um, but yeah, they're just for like the winch cable and stuff. And, and obviously, 
you have some dexterity in these with, with fingers, but they're terrible for insulation in temperatures below about minus seven. They really start to fail below those temperatures. And, uh, but they're good for when you want to touch metal in the winter, like touching like this, for example, when it's minus 20, it really hurt your hand and it kind of leaves a bit of a lasting bite. So just having a bit of insulation can, can just make situations more bearable. And it's just about kind of being able to endure the discomfort for longer, really, which is which is kind of what happens in the winter. Um, we've got uh, winch blankets, two of them. I always use two of these when I'm using the winch, usually one near the tree protector and one on the winch line. And that's because I'm often across a track and I don't want a snowmobile to come flying down there, not see the winch line and basically get his head or her head cut off. So it kind of helps really to have a couple of these, just to, just one to warm people and obviously to protect yourself as well. Other stuff in here, a recovery strop. This isn't a kinetic energy rope or a snatch strap. This is just a, a standard recovery strop, five ton, 10 meters. I've used it to extend the range of the winch, which is pretty decent to be fair. I mean, I was in one situation where the only tree was at the top of an incline and uh, using this actually got me out of that situation. So it sort of paid for itself just there really. Um, but you know, I think it pays to carry something like this. Um, I've also got like a load dividing uh, strap where again, five ton, you can use this across the front bumper, two shackles, for example, I use it as a, a tree protector. Um, although it is a little bit on the thin side, but it's pretty soft and not seeing it do any damage on trees really. Um, so yeah, that one too, pretty useful. A little guy here, use this for a couple of things really, just to connect stuff up. But again, I carry it because it is useful. We've got a, a board, a bit of plywood with a piece of aluminium on the top there, pretty thick aluminium, although it still will bend. You really need something like this here. If I had max tracks, I would ditch this because this is heavy, but for the time being, it's the old board. Five ton bottle jack. Pretty damn useful, we use this loads actually. I just cut the top of a axle stand off and pop that on the top there. Although that isn't that adequate, but it just makes it that little bit safer. And this is where the putt comes in. Sometimes I use the putt to get an extra inch. Who, who couldn't do with an extra inch? And um, yeah, it really helps actually. The only thing I would say is one thing I've got at home, I've bought some pipe. I'm gonna weld that on and make an adapter. So when this is sort of wound all the way out, which it can come up pretty high. You've got an adapter to slot on and make it that much higher because there are certain situations where this bottle jack is not quite tall enough. I've seen people use them to reset a bead on a tire, uh, but I think the high lift jack is probably you know, much more useful for that, although I've seen it done with a bottle jack, but I don't know whether that bottle jack's big enough. I've not got really any experience with that, so you know, maybe maybe comment. Um, obviously the handle for the bottle jack, which doubles up as a socket extension for doing some work and stuff with the, with the tool kit. And you know, I mentioned the puck. And this is a warning triangle. Um, some, some, I mean, it's, is it recovery? You know, you could argue no, but I think you should carry one. I mean, some, some places I'm in, there might, it might see a bit of traffic with, I could say snowmobiles and, and other vehicles coming down the trail if you're on a busy one. Um, it's very unlikely here to be honest, but I just carry it because, you know, for me it, it sort of represents recovery and um, yeah, it, it's useful. And obviously you've got my um, jump leads there, just some little ones, but uh, yeah, I just carry, carry some jump leads in there. I mean, you know, sometimes you might meet someone who, who needs help and there's really nowhere else I put them in the vehicle where it makes sense. I do have an electronics bag here. Uh, just on the side and I thought about putting them in there maybe as the recovery kit fills up with more equipment if it does in the future they'll get moved over but that is basically my solo recovery gear we've got everything you see here in this bag we've got the shovel we've got the mat and we've got the chains and obviously most important we have the winch and the rated recovery points on the front and the back of the vehicle I don't want to blur the lines between recovery and other such things too much but I think something that does really tie into recovery here is having an axe and a saw um, in cold conditions you know cutting wood building tracks and making things for traction really help i mean the axe and the saw you could quite easily lumber those in with the shovel you know they're really one in the same all those sorts of tools um, for working 
you know, with, with the environment around you to help you build things and create a track and stuff. I've also got a small compressor, um, but that's not really technically recovery. It's the bag on the side that has a tyre repair kit, new valve cores. You know, that is something I'd definitely say was a part of recovery, but I'll be honest, I've only ever practised with it on an old tyre, never actually used it. And to be honest with you, I'd probably just put the spare on um, and then repair the tyre later um, while I was at camp or when I was back home or at a garage or something. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'm not the most experienced with that sort of kit. I've only ever practised on old tyres with it, but that's the best I can do right now. So other than all the recovery gear you've seen, I have actually got a high lift jack. And I carried, I carried the high lift jack for about five years. And this is a three ton Jackal, which is kind of like a, a brand, I believe, that comes from the UK. Um, so it's not essentially a high lift brand, but it is a very reliable brand. And I think a lot of these used to be on the old Land Rovers. I actually got given this as a gift when I left the UK. Uh, by a mate of mine. And I still use this loads. I've used it to level my porch. I've used it to lift the garage doors off the hinges and level the hinges. I've used it to pull out fence posts. I've lent it to people to level their porches. Um, I've used it on a massive car lift when it went up too high and it had to be pushed down a little bit because the hydraulics got stuck. It's been used for so much stuff, compressing massive struts and, you know, all sorts of things i can't really go over everything i've used it for but it's a very useful tool at pulling things apart or pushing them together or lifting things up and um you know i i don't really carry it anymore on the vehicle if you look at the vehicle it's got lots of jacking points on it with a high lift jack i have an aftermarket bumper uh, the vehicle's frame stiffened all the way through i've tied that into box rockers and tube sliders on the side as, as well as the rear bumper with tube sliders on uh, the rear tire carrier you, you know you can lift the vehicle pretty successfully from a lot of different positions you don't want to go too high um, I mean maybe if you welded a bit of tube or box section on like an engagement sleeve just here it's going to be a lot safer but I think for me that the honest reason I just don't carry a high lift jack anymore is I just, I'm just not skilled enough to use one uh, properly and, and it's more dangerous for me to use the high lift jack and when I get stuck and I have to recover myself it's not the first thing I turn to I don't even think about the high lift jack because I'm too afraid of it because I don't have the experience with the high lift jack to be able to pull off a confident recovery scenario and probably get through it without damaging my vehicle or hurting myself um, I mean, they're probably a very mild situations where, you know, okay, I'll use a little bit of the high lift jack here to get out. But most of the time, I'm, I'm just too, I just don't have the confidence with it or the training or the experience behind it. And I know people might say, well, you know, the only way you're going to get experience is by, by using the high lift jack. But I think it's a pretty dangerous tool to kind of screw around with. And um, although I've not seen any accidents personally, you know, there's a lot online and, um, you know, it's a, it's a tool that deserves respect. And, uh, and when it goes wrong, <laughs> it, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take any prisoners. It, it just, it, it's a beast. So although I find it immensely useful for home renovation and, and for mild situations, I just don't have the experience with it. And if there was somebody out there who was an expert on high lift jack and ran training courses and I was able to go for a weekend and do it, and that isn't a pitch. It probably isn't anywhere in Sweden that does that. Um, well, very few places anyway, and it may be in the south where you've got the Jeep clubs and the off-road clubs and stuff. I would definitely go and, and, and learn how to use a high lift jack properly. And then maybe I'd carry one. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of th things online, like, you know, the high lift jack is rubbish for changing a tire and a bottle jack's better. Yeah, in, in most situations, the bottle jack, I think, is better because it just slides on the board under the axle, pick it up one inch, the vehicle's then barely lifted. So not a huge amount of kinetic energy there waiting to smash down. Tire comes off, new tire on, you know, you're good, aren't you? But um, the high lift jack can also be used to change a tire, and I have done that. That is something I've done. And basically you just hook that round something on the axle and put that round a loop on the frame at the front that I've got. And um, when you pick up the chassis, the axle goes with it all in one, like the vehicle was all one lot solid welded lump. And then you can change the tire really easily. So you can use the high lift jack to change a tire, 
but yeah arguably the bottle jack's probably a little bit safer if you don't know what you're doing with the um high lift jack but uh there is one thing i keep imagining with the high lift jack and, and that is if i snap a coil or i break a leaf um the high lift jack would probably be really useful for being able to pick the vehicle up and max out the suspension travel remove the busted coil and um and potentially fit a new coil or put something in there or jerry rig that coil with rubber and other such stuff or something to to kind of allow you to get home i think the high lift jack would would be really useful and you know if i was in a convoy i think i think i'd definitely carry it um or, or someone would carry a high lift jack but but solo traveling uh, i'm not going to carry it I'm not going to carry it. So, but anyway, what are your thoughts on 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 it? You know, tell tell me what you think. Well, that really brings me to the end of the video. I mean, hopefully you enjoyed that and it shone some light on on some of the stuff I use. I'm no expert. There'll be a lot of people out there who who have a lot more experience than me with with winter wheeling and recovery situations. Um, and there are a lot of guys out there on YouTube who, who are you know a lot more experienced. So. You know, I don't want to come across as a position of authority going, you know, this is what you've got to carry. Because because the reality is, is I'm just kind of learning through experience, through my own experiences and watching other people and seeing what they do. And, um, and that kit is kind of something I've built just based upon my limited budget, but also um, you know, my experience too. Um, and, and really the best parts of the kit in, in, a, in a way are the winch that shovel, which I absolutely love now. I mean, I've used, my wife makes fun of me all the time because <laughs> I've bought or, or, or found from secondhand stores and everything, maybe about seven or eight different shovels in, in the three years I've been here. And I've been through them all. And I said to her, this is the one, this is the one Meg, I love this shovel. She's like, yeah, I've heard it all before. Mike heard it all before. But, but seriously, that is a great shovel and putting that extension on it and making it longer. There's been so many situations now where I'm bellied up and I'm just not having to get on my hands and knees and get covered up in snow that gets wet later. It makes you cold, especially when the temperatures drop at night. I can stay dry and I can clear the underneath of the vehicle. Um, you just got to wear gloves with it, obviously, because it's aluminium and when it's cold, you know, your hands get absolutely sort of bitten to pieces. But uh, the winch, again, you know, goes without saying a decent winch is, is uh, you know, I don't think you need to be an expert to know that. But, uh, you know, and having some supportive gear for the winch too. All that sort of stuff really helps, but max tracks would be great. Some sort of traction board, but again, all this stuff costs money. It's all gradual, as is building the vehicle up, the suspension, all the, the mods you do to it, and the fabrication. So it all takes time. So get, I'll get there eventually. This is where I am at the moment, the beginning of 2021. And um, yeah, join me in another video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care.